And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Pelagera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHoppingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, August 31st, 2021. Well, picking up where we left off, the market during Globex did go up and push to a new high at 15,677.25. Now, I could put the four here and I could put a five here and that would declare an end to this uh, minute wave five, which in turn would complete a minor wave five, et cetera, et cetera, up on, on up to all of those advancing sequences that uh, I have been following. I'm not gonna do that just yet. I am waiting to get a cleaner indication from the market that in fact, those are the highs and that will come from my hourly chart and having the ability to count five waves down on my hourly chart. If I open that up, it hasn't happened yet. It's not there. So that's why I dropped back down to the 30 minute chart and opened that one up so that I could see what does it look like inside. And right now, <clears throat> it seems to be like one, two, three, four, five, possibly one, a rally for two, and then maybe one of three. So this is how I'm going to leave it, and this is how I'm going to pr present what could happen tomorrow. If indeed we're going to drop in a third wave, we need this to turn, not break above, 15,615. If it breaks above 15, this is not wave one of three, and this certainly cannot be wave two of three. Wave two of three can equal, but it cannot exceed the starting point for that first wave, and that would be right here. And so if it breaks above, then we're more than likely going to head back up to this resistance, possibly even up to 15,685. So, but if we start to turn, I would be expecting the market to begin to accelerate because it's a third wave. And again, remember third waves, longest and the strongest of a five wave sequence. That is the, the general guideline. And the, the, the actual rule is that out of waves one, three, and five, three is most normal to be the longest and the strongest, but it cannot be the shortest wave out of one, three, and five. So in this case, this would be wave one, and this would be two, and that's the start of three. So if it does start to accelerate, I am looking forward to immediately break below uh, 15,517, and then break this support, and then actually find some support at, at 456, which is the 200-day moving average, and then break it and start to break down. Now, we still have, for this sequence, the no break zone at 15,455. So once it breaks below there, that then negates corrective waves coming off and a continuation of this sequence. Doesn't mean that it can go down and correct and turn around and come right back up. It certainly can. But then, then I can put that label of five up here and then see where it goes from there. That's why I'm leaving it open because the market has not given me enough evidence that that's what the case is. So here we sit for tomorrow. Now we did have um, consumer, consumer confidence was reported today. It threw a little bit of a, a wrench into any rally attempts, not bad. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. we have ISM manufacturing. That holds a little bit more weight with the market because it's an indication of the manufacturing sector and how they're doing and what's going on there. So that could uh, give us a better clue as to what that top actually did finish. Okay, so then going on with this week, we have jobless claims on uh, Thursday and we have factory orders, which is not really all that earth shattering. We have the International Trade in Goods and Services. That's also at 8.30. Jobless comes at 8.30. And then on Friday, 
we have the employment situation, which basically is just the unemployment figures for August, all totaled up. And that's going to give a much cleaner look at inflation. That'll help the Fed and actually traders gauge what direction inflation is going. Is it truly under control? Or is the Fed going to be forced to start to taper now, before the end of the year? But they just kind of jump in and go, okay, we're going to start now. And again, realizing that that will produce, if they start, that'll produce a negative effect on the market. I don't think the market's going to sit and say, oh, yeah, we're okay with that. Um, so for tomorrow, if the market holds below 15,615 and begins to turn lower, I'm going to be counting this as a one, a two, and a one of this first wave down, two of the first wave down, and then the beginning of a third wave. <clears throat> and I would, the continuation would be a three of three. That's why it should accelerate lower. It should not have any problems breaking through support as we begin to see um, people exiting from positions, selling, taking profits, et cetera. Um, in lieu of that, if we have another kind of inside day, it's really going to throw a wrench into any side. Uh, because right now we're in that spot where it's like, okay, market, decide. Decide what it is you want to do. And so having the kind of the inside day that we did today, you know, that, that actually fits because we had such a strong day yesterday. And that was followed by a strong day that we had on, <clears throat> well, yesterday. As, as we roared higher. And so that's why we consolidate. But now the consolidation needs to come and go like, okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go up, we're gonna go down. And you can see as we finish the uh, after hours, we're now pushing back above 15,600. So again, I'm leaving it as follows. If we hold below 15,615 and the market then turns lower again, I would expect acceleration. If we don't get the acceleration, we may then be in store for a continued rally. If the market moves up from here and breaks above this level, it's basically going to leave a three-wave pattern down. It'll be an ABC. And then again, I may be forced to push all of this up or rearrange the degree and this could be a wave one of a much larger push higher. That's the reverse. That's the other side of that coin, which is why I'm leaving this blank right now. So if they're going to continue to push, then we're looking for much, much higher levels. Right now, I'm leaving these resistance zones in place. We have, once we come off of this, 15,685, then it's above 15,700. And in fact, next resistance of any strength, you're gonna find some at 15, at 50, it's 85, et cetera, but that's the next zone, that's the next area, 15,800. And if it gets up that high, then this is a one and all, this would be a two, and we are off to the races in the third. So that's what we have. That's what we're staring down the barrel at. The fact that this could be a wave one of a much higher degree push. Or it's wave one of the five. I, you know, it's still to be determined. So we do have underlying strength in the market. Now we got to let the market tell us what its intentions are and what it's going to be doing. Now, so this is where I'm going to leave it. We got our break point. We also have a break point to the downside at 15,455, which if it breaks below that, then that does leave this as a five wave advance untouched. But again, it could be a one of something moving higher, right? So that if this is gonna end up being a one, then this coming off and it breaks that could just be nothing more than a wave two. So we have both possibilities, still sitting out there, still waiting. Now we're waiting on the market to tell us. That's how I'm going to leave it for today. 
Continue to trade what's in front of you. Continue to trade according with your moving averages. The next update will be September the 1st.